I just think it's really important to to kind of go into more about the importance of storytelling when it comes to to impact reporting. A, like a story goes a lot further than a stat. Um, it a, sto- a story has the ability to persuade. It has the ability to lead and inspire people. And if you use a good story along with your kind of stats and evidence like that, it makes for a really kind of compelling application. So, you know, I can't, you can't underestimate the amount of influence a good story will have. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Beyond Funding. Today we're here with our wonderful Grants and Impact Officer, Lisa, and we're going to talk a bit more about the importance of demonstrating the impact of your project and how churches and charities can successfully do this. So hi, Lisa, how are you? Hi, I'm really well. How are you? Very well, thank you. It's really nice to have you on the on the programme and it's going to be really interesting to talk to you about this topic because it's fair to say that impact is something that's well, having the specific impact role is quite new to the trust, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yes. So can you tell us a bit more about um, yourself and your role at the trust specifically? Sure. So I've worked in grant making for about nine years now. And, um, you know, I bring quite a bit of experience in kind of using data to inform grant making decisions. And my role at Benefact Trust is actually a dual role. So it's part grants officer, part impact officer. The grants officer part of my role is um, really to help implement new programs. It is to uh, represent the trust externally and also to assess and make recommendations for our applications to our trustees. And then the impact side of my role is really leading on the trust's approach to impact and evaluating that impact and communicating it. So what is it that specifically interests you about the impact side of your role, would you say? So I really developed a keen interest in in using data and how it can provide insights and demonstrate impact on the difference that we're making in the world. Mm. And I love being able to bring those kind of high level stats along with um, stories, really, because people and stories um, are behind those stats. And I, I just really enjoy being able to bring that together into a really compelling narrative um, that really demonstrates the difference that we're making. And I feel quite a lot of pride in being able to do that for our team. And it's really, it's it's amazing, isn't, isn't it, when you hear the stories of our different beneficiaries, the, the types of things and the, and the case studies of people that are being helped. And to bring this together to demonstrate impact is, is a really important thing, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I think all of the grants officers here at Benefact Trust really enjoy reading some of the applications that we get, hearing about the case studies of the real difference some of the organisations we're supporting are making. Why do you think it is that impact is so important for for organisations to demonstrate? So impact is really important for a number of reasons. Um, good governance to start with. Um, Also, fundraising, you know, being able to demonstrate your impact is really important for funders, um, you know, for them to really be able to invest in what you're doing. Um, Also, in terms of your own reporting, so measuring outcomes and objectives uh, for your organisation, and also just stakeholder engagement. So if, you know, you've got a lot of volunteers working for your organisation, you know, most of them are likely to be doing that because they want to make a difference and how do you know that you're making a difference if you don't measure that and communicate that yeah that's so true isn't it because it, and it must be a real sort of morale boost to know you're working for an organization and you're seeing all the the real life difference that that they're making absolutely what is it that we're looking for from applicants in terms of demonstrating their impact and outcomes So we want to know the difference that your organisation and project is making that you're applying funding for. And to do this, you need to identify the need. You need to tell us why you're the best organisation to um, address that need. Mm -hmm. And you need to tell us what activities you're doing and what success looks like. And you need to back each of those things up with some evidence. Um, You know, and bonus points really if you are able to identify learnings perhaps if you've run the project before you know what did you learn from your project previously you know that really demonstrates that you're willing to learn from you know potentially mistakes what went well and 
ultimately give the best service to your beneficiaries. Yeah. Remember those bonus points then. Everyone should remember. (laughs) So I expect there's quite a lot of challenges that beneficiaries could face when it comes to impact reporting, um, especially people perhaps of different size organisations, things like that. So could you tell us a bit more about some of those challenges and also how organisations can overcome those challenges? I think knowing where to start is probably the biggest challenge for a lot of organisations. You know, and it's really in the planning. Uh, New Philanthropy Capital are actually really good. They've got some really great advice um, and resources on their website. And they talk about a cycle of plan, do, assess, review. And the planning stage of that is essentially starting with your theory of change. Now, your theory of change is a document that really supports your strategy. And that kind of identifies your vision and mission. It then goes through the outcomes that you're hoping to achieve, what activities that you're going to do, and uh, what your audience is, and what assumption, assumptions that you're making uh, about the links between those activities and outcomes. And then once you have that in place, you're able to then work out your impact framework. And your impact framework is essentially looking at what data is it that you need to, you know, prove that the outcomes that you're hoping to achieve and working through how you're going to evaluate that and how you're going to communicate that. So it really has to be, you know, you have to be thinking of these things right from the start of your project. It's not like you can start thinking about, oh, uh, what can I be measuring right at the end? You need to really plan it into the whole sort of range of your project, I suppose. Absolutely. It's all in the planning. You know, if you you can't an, you can't answer questions with your data that you haven't asked right at the start yeah so you know it's it's best to put the effort in at the beginning i know that it's sometimes challenging mm. and it can be time consuming but once you have that in place it it's really beneficial for your organization you know it's easy to adapt and change services if you need to and yeah, it is, it's a really supportive kind of document that will underpin the work that you're doing. Yeah, really good point. And then after um, you've kind of got the planning stage, it's then the do. So you're then implementing your kind of practices, uh, implementing your theory of change and your impact framework. And then you assess. So you're looking at, you know, what have you learned? What is the data telling you? And then you review it. So that's when you're you're communicating kind of what, what outcomes that you've achieved, what you're planning to do differently in the future um, in terms of, you know, getting get, getting better outcomes next time. Mm, brilliant. How can organisations successfully factor impact into their grant applications, for example? So it doesn't need to be complicated and quite often organisations will already probably have what they need or most of what they need to demonstrate their impact. So you'll be wanting to demonstrate the need that you're addressing and use evidence to back that up and identify positive outcomes. So, for example, if you've got a homeless charity or a charity working with the homeless, you know, one of their goals is to get um, people off of the streets and into homes. And they might demonstrate this through using Office of National Statistics data uh, to identify the need and also through kind of case studies of their own work they can go through a story of some a a success story that they they have had so for example somebody one of the people that they've managed to get off of the streets and into a home they've had additional impacts such as you know that person that has better relationships with their family they've been able to find a job and their mental health has improved. So, you know, there's lots of added benefits that you can kind of show through case studies that might also not be part of your original mission, but shows that you're really making a difference in the world. Yeah. And I guess all of this is incredible support for an application because it shows straight away the difference you're already making. So, you know, it reassures a grant funder that, you know, this 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 is actually working in real life. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, being able to kind of demonstrate and have clarity around your outcomes is super important. So we touched upon a few bits around data before, but can you tell us about data collection methods and and sources and all that kind of information (laughs) that's a bit over my head, to be honest? Sure. So there are 
various different types of data. The most common would be kind of qualitative and quantitative. They can be a bit tongue twistery sometimes, <laughs> but um, yeah. So qualitative data is descriptive data. So that is, or that can be found through things like um, observations, interviews, focus groups, that kind of thing. And then you've got quantitative data, which is data that is numerical. And you'll find that through potentially surveys, questionnaires, um, quizzes, and even kind of social media engagement. And so some of the sources of data, so you could, uh, I mentioned previously, you've got Office of National Statistics, mm -hmm. Census Data, Indices of Deprivation. Um, there's also the UK Data Service, and they host about 9,000 pieces of data, actually, that are kind of qualitative and quantitative. Mm -hmm. And you know, that, that can be great, but I would just err with caution on using data from other sources and just ensure that it's answering the question that you're wanting it to answer because you have to be very specific when you're using data because if you are using data for one question that's different from another, you could kind of come out with some misleading results. So, yeah, yeah just to be careful and mindful of that. We've touched upon it slightly in other questions, but I just think it's really important to to kind of go into more about the importance of storytelling when it comes to, to impact reporting. So a story is really essential, especially from a funder's perspective. You can, a, like a story goes a lot further than a stat. Um, it, a, sto a story has the ability to persuade, it has the ability to lead and inspire people. And if you use a good story along with your kind of stats and evidence like that, it makes for a really kind of compelling application. So, you know, I can't, you can't underestimate the amount of influence a good story will have. Yeah. You can actually picture and visualize the difference that it's really going to make. As, um, and people, I mean, everyone um, has different ways of taking in information and there'll be the people that the stats really appeal to and that's what they're looking for. But there'll be the, those other people that really need that kind of emotional connection with a project. What's the real life difference is going to be made because of this project? So I think it's, it's brilliant to have that balance, isn't it? Absolutely. I think, you know, understanding your audience when you're collecting data is super important for that reason, because, you know, funders will probably want a mixture of the two. If you're working in policy and trying to get kind of government contracts, you might want a lot more kind of statistical data. Yeah. Um, but if you're looking for funding from people, you know, everyday people, they are, they, in, they're inspired to give through the stories that the organisation tells. So yeah, understanding your audience is super important. Definitely. So this is a key question. I think people will be really interested to hear uh, what your top tips are in terms of measuring such reporting on impact. So I kind of said this earlier, but I think it's all in the planning, really. I think having a clear vision and mission um, is going to be really helpful. Um, identify um, identifiable and measurable outcomes and have a range of reporting techniques. So if you are creating an impact report, then, you know, use charts, use statistics, use case studies, you know, just make it more compelling for somebody to want to read and keep it simple. So I've come across some impact reports that can be absolutely full with information. Um, and sometimes that can be quite off-putting to read, actually. Um, it's great to know that they're obviously evidencing their impact, but sometimes, you know, if if you want your impact report to have impact, people need to read it. Yeah. <laughs> so try to keep it simple. Um, and you don't need to use all of the information that you collect to, uh, to address your impact. As long as you are showing the difference that you're making, then that's what you need to do. I think that's a really good point, actually, like all the points that you've included in those top tips, because it's also it shows like you're saying, keep it simple, that organizations of different sizes can measure impact. You don't have to have this huge team uh, working for you. You can keep it simple, but still demonstrate the real the real impact that you're making. Absolutely. I think if you if you've spent the time in the initial planning stages, then, you know, the actual impact measurement shouldn't take a significant mm. amount of work. Um, so, yeah, just 
plan, 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 and then try plan, to keep, plan, it, plan. keep it simple. Remember in our last episode, <laughs> I think the key word was, was research, and now it's plan, plan, plan. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Can you think of any great examples that you've seen in terms of impact reporting? So... Actually, we don't request impact reports as such from our um, the people that we support or the organisations we support. So what we tend to do is ask f- for organisations to report on the outcomes that, that they tell us themselves that they're trying to achieve. But I have seen, I have come across still some some great impact reports just kind of casually as you do. <laughs> um, so Young Minds uh, was one I come across recently. That's it's slightly more advanced and it's an online, it was an online report. Um, but, you know, it was really clear. You can see the the links to their theory of change, which is really, you know, great because you're able to kind of follow their story from, you know, their through their activities to what they're achieving in terms of their mission. And Roots as well was another, was another charity who work with, um, asylum seekers with female asylum seekers and their report was quite simple but I thought was very effective again I think because it was clear and there was clear links to their theory of change you could really see the the difference that they were making so we touched upon it earlier in the sense that you know this is this is quite a new role for the trust having the grants and impact officer so can you tell us a bit more about how perhaps the trust has developed in terms of measuring our own impact so the trust is really focused on wanting to make a difference uh, to people and communities. And my role is to evolve the trust activity in this area and really be able to demonstrate the continued kind of impact that we're having uh, in a practical and effective way. Do you know of any or have any specific resources that you think you know are great to share in terms of, of measuring impact? Yeah, so I touched on one of those previously with New Philanthropy Capital. Um, They've got some fantastic resources that are free to access on their website around impact measurement and understanding impact and also the creation of a theory of change. It kind of goes through all of the steps that you need to follow. Um, And also National Council for Voluntary Organisations as well. They also have some similar great uh, guidance on their website. It's brilliant to know that they're free as well so everyone can access them and, you know, have a look. Absolutely. So you've given some really, really great tips, but I just wondered from your perspective, is, if there's anything that you think we've missed out or anything that you would like to add? Um, I think I've probably covered most things, but I think um, just ensuring in your planning stages when you're looking at impact measurement to identify your audience. I know I touched on that previously um, and the importance of that. And also peer to peer. So there's you know, a lot of organisations out there that be willing to kind of give advice, have a chat with you. If you're seeing other organisations creating a great impact report, use it for inspiration, um, you know, and or give them a call, drop them an email just to see if they'd be willing to have a chat with you if you're just starting your journey on it, but you really, really admire their approach to it, for example. You know, we, we work in this sector because we all want to make a difference and collaboration you know, is a real focus in the sector. So, you know, don't be afraid to just put your hand up and say, would you mind having a conversation, yeah. giving a bit of guidance? I think people will probably be quite touched if you if you go yeah. to them and say, do you know, I'm really impressed with this this work. Am I, am I able to have some tips or can I, can I base my work off that? I think that's really, really what's nice about the kind of sector that we're in. Absolutely. It's why I love doing what I do and working in this organisation. You know, everyone... And our team is so supportive. All of the organisations that we support are doing absolutely incredible work. And, you know, we all want to support everyone to be as successful as they can in, in delivering that work. So Exactly. Thank you so much, Lisa. Thank you. I've just, I just <laughs> feel like I've learned so much. And so everyone that's actually working within this kind of wants to measure their own impact and things like that, they're going to have learned loads. So thank you so much for joining us. Glad I could help. And I know you're a little bit nervous at first, but it wasn't (laughs) as bad as we thought it was going to be. No, actually, it was fine. (laughs) Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching another episode of Beyond Funding. You can find more information on the advice and resources section of the Benefat Trust website. We'll also make a list of the helpful resources that Lisa mentioned within this podcast at the end of the episode. And you can watch, listen and subscribe to our YouTube and Spotify so you don't miss out on future episodes. Thank you so much for listening.